do you know there are some numbers known as Pythagorean triplets? Well, what characteristics do they possess? Let's see. Consider these numbers. Say 3 and 4 and let us square them. You can see that 3 and 4 are consecutive and both are positive. Now let us square these numbers. What do you get? 3 square is 9. 3 into 3. 4 square is 4 into 4. 16. And let us add these numbers. What will you get? 9 plus 16 gives us 25. Now you know that any number can be expressed as a product of prime numbers or prime factors. How can you express 25? Right? So 25 can be expressed as 5 into 5. Now, 5 into 5 represents something. That is 5 square. So what do you see? Well, 3 square plus 4 square gives us actually 5 square. So we can say that the numbers 3, 4, and 5, they have a relation among them. It is actually the collection of numbers 3, 4, and 5 is called the Pythagorean triplet. The triplet here refers to these three numbers. Now, 3 square plus 4 square gives us 5 square. This relation among three numbers is called Pythagoras triplet. Think about any such triplet. Well, 6, 8 and 10 is also a Pythagorean triplet. Can you just verify that for me? Find out 6 square plus 8 square and see whether you get 10 square or not. S check it out. Let's see what I get. 6 square is 6 into 6, 36. Plus 8 square is 64. Well, that gives me 36 plus 64 is 100. And that is actually what? 10 square. See, we got this. So we can say that 6, 8 and 10 is also a Pythagorean triplet. Now, here we have given you this triplet, but one number is missing over here. Say one number is 5, another is 12, and you have to find the third one. So, find out the missing number in this Pythagorean triplet. Let us start squaring them. So, 5 square plus 12 square will give us the missing numbers. Because 5 square plus 12 square will give us such a number whose square will be equal to the addition of these two squares. So, let us find this out. 5 square is 25 and 12 square is 144. What do I get? Now tell me, what is the square root of 169? Or if I ask you which number when squared gives us 169? That is 13. So what will be the missing number here? 13. Well, do you notice one thing? The two smaller numbers when squared and added gives us the square of the largest number. So whenever you have a Pythagorean triplet, the two numbers which are lesser than the largest number when squared and added will always give you the square of the largest number in the Pythagorean triplet. You see, the missing number here is 30. So you can say 5, 12 and 13 form another Pythagorean triplet. But how many such triplets can you just memorize like this? That 5, 12 and 13 are Pythagorean triplets or 6, 8 and 10. There must be some way to find these triplets. Well, let's see what are those ways. See, for any natural number m that is greater than 1. So you are, we are taking a natural number that is m and it should be greater than 1. 
then this relation holds true. What is this relation? 2m whole square plus m square minus 1 whole square gives us m square plus 1 whole square. See, we are getting, if say this is a number, m, then 2m whole square, this represents 1 square. This one, m square minus 1 whole square, this represents another square. Now, these both added gives us again a square. So, this is what we do in Pythagorean triplet. Well, let's check and see whether this holds true for both sides. Find out LHS. 2m whole square, let's expand it. We get 4m square plus, now let us expand this. This is in the form of a minus b whole square and we can expand it by the formula a minus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. So let us expand this. So we expanded this. Now let us see what we get. m square when squared gives us m to the power 4 plus 1 square is 1 minus 2m square into 1 gives us 2m square. So what can I write from here? 4m square minus 2m square gives me 2m square plus m to the power 4 plus 1. Well now if I factorize it or let me simplify it, I will get what? m square plus 1 whole square. Check. m square when squared gives you m to the power 4 plus 1 square gives me 1 plus 2ab, 2m square into 1 gives me 2m square. So this is in the form of a plus b whole square. So we arrived at RHS. So you can see how this is holding true for both sides. So we can say that 2m, m square minus 1 and m square plus 1 where m is a natural number greater than 1 form a Pythagorean triplet. So using this you can find out unlimited number of Pythagorean triplets. Now let us try this out. Write a Pythagorean triplet in which one number is 12. So we have 2m, m square minus 1 and m square plus 1. Now 12 can be any one of them. We do not know which one can be 12. So we will take hidden trial method. Let us take m square minus 1 as 12 first. Okay? So solving it for m, what do we get? m square is 30. Now, if I square root 13 to get m, this value of m will not give an integer value for m. m square is equal to 13. So, let us try something else. Let us try m square plus 1 as 12. What do you get? m square is equal to 12 minus 1, 11. So, again, you will not get an integer value for m. So, what do we do? We have tried out m square minus 1 and we have tried out m square plus 1. So, the only option left is 2m. So let us take 2m is equal to 12. Now you will easily get a value for m that is 12 by 2 that is 6. So as we have got m is equal to 6 we can now substitute this for m to find out the other numbers of the Pythagorean triplets to find this out. Solving this we get 6 square 36 minus 1, 35. And 6 square 36 plus 1, 37. So what do you see? One member had to be 12 and the other members are 35 and 37. So the required triplet is 12, 35 and 37 where 12 is the smallest member. Well, remember that you cannot find out all the Pythagorean triplets using this method. Why? Because there may be other Pythagorean triplets also where 12 is a second member or the third member or you can say the largest member in the group. So here we have taken out where 12 is the smallest number. You may get another triplets also or other Pythagorean triplets also where 12 is the second or third number.